to Leaders of Tomorrow Season 10. I'm Sunanda Jai Seelan and you're watching this special series of conversations that we're doing that we call Eye on Dubai, focusing on all the innovation coming out of the Dubai market. And today we're doing all the interviews that matter from Jitex 2022. Today's conversation is a very special one. I spoke to someone who is an entrepreneur himself and now holds a very high office when it comes to the government here in Dubai. I'm in conversation with the Minister of State for Artificial Intelligence, a very young minister who spoke to me amongst other things in this very freewheeling chat about uh, some of the lessons that he brings from having been an entrepreneur at a young age to now being in public office, his advice for India's entrepreneurs and what he feels some of those emerging technologies are going to be that we need to keep our eyes on. Let's start. Dubai is at the center of accelerating the world's digital economies and Jitex, the world's largest, most inclusive tech and startup event, has been a key contributor towards Dubai's growth. This year, the top cutting-edge businesses and minds joined together for the 42nd Jitex Global, which took place at the Dubai World Trade Center, where more than 5,000 tech companies participated from all around the world. We caught up with His Excellency Omar Sultan Al Olama, Minister of State for Artificial Intelligence, Digital Economy and Remote Work Applications to discuss digital and technology contributions towards UAE's economy, Jitex role, device position as a tech hub and much more. So good having you here as part of this week-long special series that we're doing on the leaders of tomorrow on Times Network really talking to decision makers like yourselves and entrepreneurs about the world of technology and technology, business and entrepreneurship. And uh, you wear all of those hats perfectly. So thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And um, I hear a lot of great things about your show and I look forward to watching it myself. We look forward to having you watch these interviews. And before we dive into the big picture of entrepreneurship and AI and uh, just Jitex, uh, a little birdie tells us that you used to be an entrepreneur yourself, that you started your professional career as an entrepreneur, not in the tech space from what I understand. Uh, but, you know, just talk to us really about that. I started my uh, life as an entrepreneur in multiple different sectors, some official, some non-official. What I mean by that is at points of time, I did not have a trade license, but I used to trade. Like mm -hmm. I would buy something from, from someone, I would sell it to someone else who would need that product. I then uh, went into distribution. So I started to distribute fast moving consumer goods, consumer electronics and other products as well. And started a technology company as well at, at one point of time. The, the experiences I learned in entrepreneurship have shaped me as a person. They've shaped my social interactions, they've okay. shaped the, my mindset, they've shaped my approach when it comes to approaching different projects. So I, I do um, think that this is the secret of my success, being an entrepreneur first and doing it at an age when you are willing to absorb everything around you yeah. is very important. What lessons from being an entrepreneur were you able to bring into office? Absolutely. And even your personal life, by the way, the lessons you learn, negotiation, yeah. being able to promote the products that you're selling or whatever you're doing as a business, being able to manage a team with all the different issues that will come with the team, right? People who are demotivated that need to be motivated, people who have ambitions, but for example, cannot work in teams. You can bring that even to your children, you can bring that to your home, you can bring that to your friends. So I think the skill sets are very, very important. So we are here, of course, at Jitex 2022, and I want to say congratulations. It's a hugely successful event. Anyone who has anything to do with the field of technology, digital, really ensuring that they're finding a representation here. We have several Indian entrepreneurs as well who are here. And I really want to talk about why platforms like this are crucial when it comes to technology and just talk to us really uh, about the kind of participation we're seeing at Jitex 2022. So uh, Jitex is the biggest tech show in the world of its kind. It brings East and West, really all the top players in technology together. And the thing it provides them is a unique and it's an unbiased uh, uh, opportunity, regardless of where they're from, to showcase their technology to the best and the brightest, whether it's government, whether it's private sector, whether it's entrepreneurs and individuals as well. 
is a festivity dedicated to technology. That's yeah. what it is. And we've seen the growth. I think if you want to expand beyond your boundaries or beyond your geography, the only place to be today is Jatex. I've been reading previous interviews of yours where you've said that you expect the contribution from uh, digital and technology to be almost 20% of the non-oil contribution as far as your GDP and the economy is concerned. Uh, could you call out for us where you're seeing that growth really going to come from? We've seen it already historically. So we had 7% was the contribution of digital economy on our non-oil GDP in 2017 or 2018. It's today over 11%. So we've already seen this organic growth uh, and we're going to continuously see it in uh, things like, for example, uh, companies that are digital first, whether it's in e-commerce, whether it's in SaaS, you know, software as a service, whether it's also in optimizing the ability of certain conventional sectors using technology, like using AI in manufacturing and oil sure. and gas and others as well. Sure. So uh, I think, you know, hopefully we're even going to exceed that target. Because as we see the economy evolve, we're going to see a convergence of conventional economy and digital economy as well. Mm -hmm. uh, will you be willing to sort of call out for our viewers by way of a trend to say, you know, because we're talking metaverse and metaverse, you know, has a whole bunch of uh, technologies, if I can call it that. We're talking about deep tech. We're talking about AI. Uh, you were talking about SaaS, this cloud, of course, for small businesses. Which of these do you think is going to just get so much more crucial and important for small businesses that you want to call out? I think the first thing is AI is going to become a lot uh, cheaper. We're all, going, we're all going to see an evolution where we're going to have pre-trained models that okay. can be deployed across sectors. Yeah. Where, you know, if I have an idea, I do not need to bring in AI experts, mm -hmm. you know, uh, get the computing capabilities. All I need is to have access to pre-trained models where I actually train it then or deploy it to a specific industry and get the results. So that's going to be a trend that we're going to see a lot more of. Another is computing on the edge. So there's a lot of hardware cost that you need to spend today to get into the AI space, to get into different sectors when it comes to technology. Sure. I think we're going to see a lot of that on the edge. Third is cloud is definitely one of the big ones. Uh, I think cloud is going to be a, a specific a game changer when it comes to storage of data, when it comes to access, you know, whether it's access to software or access to uh, information. Uh, what, what we're seeing is a convergence of all of these things, whether it's metaverse, uh, cloud technology, AI, they're all converging to create a new revolution, right? Okay. We hear about the fourth Which industrial is revolution. Which uh, I don't think it's just web. Okay. So, so web 3.0 is definitely one of them. Yeah. But I think the fourth industrial revolution is, is the, the, the banner that everyone uses, because mm -hmm. I also think that robotics are gonna use cloud to store data, AI to understand their surroundings. They're going to have blockchain for increased security and transparency to a certain degree. So we're seeing it converge on everything in our lives. The sure. same with the internet today converge on everything in our lives. Sure. Uh, you know, it's fantastic that we're talking about all these future technologies. But when we speak entrepreneurs, uh, in India, a lot of entrepreneurs are still traditional businesses. They're still manufacturing businesses. They may be in real estate. Uh, they may be in manufacture of, let's say, you know, cement, infrastructure, etc. For these entrepreneurs, and I'm not sure what, uh, you know, the level of technology that small businesses in the Dubai UA region use. But for a small business, how much of these technologies are we really relating with and using really in your sense? Uh, it's important to understand that this part of the economy is as crucial as the AI companies and the cloud yeah, companies, yeah. etc. We still need small and medium enterprises that provide our day-to-day -day products, goods and services yeah. that we require, right? I think what is going to happen is we are reaching an inflection point when it comes to the key differentiator between companies is not going to be just how good the entrepreneur is. It's going to be how aggressively and how um, much agility they have in deploying certain new technologies within their value chain, okay. right? Um, the Indian ecosystem is quite interesting for me. I, I, you know, I spend a lot of time in India. Okay. And why it's interesting is because today there are so many entrepreneurs creating uh, products when it comes to technology products like AI and, and you know, cloud software yeah. and blockchain companies, etc. Have you seen a few of them here? At the We're seeing many yeah. of them here. Yeah. But what they are able to do is provide that service at a discount that is local, provided there in India. And I think that is going to help all these SMEs leapfrog. 
Sure. What I also think is going to happen is people are going to take note of what's happening in India uh, and take the same model and deploy it in Africa, in the Middle East, and, and other. And you're seeing a lot of well. those examples already. Exactly. Yeah. I'll take a quick break on that note. Back in just a moment. Just stay tuned. Welcome back with us here on our Eye on Dubai special series. We were talking about uh, contribution of technology and digital when it comes to the economy. Uh, we're speaking, of course, in the backdrop of SEPA technology. Uh, you know, not so much SEPA, but I want to talk about really bilateral trade. In your opinion, how crucial is technology going to be as far as bilateral trade between both our nations? The future of trade is definitely going to have technology as one of its core principles or pillars. Historically, by the way, trade was about technology. So if you think about maritime trade, as ports and ships started to get more advanced, trade increased. Yeah. Right? Um, the same is true with aviation. As yeah. planes got better, as we had better airports, we were able to trade better by air. I think digital trade is going to be one of the cornerstones of future trade. Okay. And that's why if you look at the SEPA agreement, it also includes the digital economy because mm -hmm. both our governments had the uh, foresight to understand that this is something that we need to invest in today yeah. to ensure that we have frictionless trade between both our nations, to ensure that we're able to better integrate, to ensure as well that we can have continuous growth in ways that benefit both the Indian economy and the UAE economy. As well. I want to speak about the gross metaverse product and really how that's going to work and you know your opinion and your thoughts on that so so this is in the exploratory phase right now yeah. we, we know that there is gross domestic product we're talking about production we're talking about measuring growth yeah. of the economy of prosperity of the nation through trade through goods and services mm -hmm. through inflow and outflow of tangible goods we think that when the world moves into a non-tangible environment like the metaverse there is still going to be trade there are still going to be goods and services. So if you ask people who play Minecraft, for example, if you ask people who uh, you know, play online games, they spend a lot of money on skins, on avatar, right? But that is not a tangible product. The creation of it does not require raw materials or inflows of goods from other places in the world. How do you measure that output? So we wanted to champion this aspect, where first we want to push for more of these things to be created in the UAE, but second, to create a mechanism for us to better measure the output of the digital uh, environment and landscape and the metaverse more specifically. Okay, uh, my last few questions and you're saying, you know, how do you measure the output? And that's very interesting. And that brings me to my next question that uh, you do have a digital council. You're, of course, you know, spearheading that. And my question is, how are you ensuring that you have policies that are regulating in some sense technology that perhaps doesn't even exist today because technology is changing as we speak? How are you doing that? We don't believe that we have the answer, but okay. what we believe is we are the best students. Okay. So um, we have something in the UAE called the Reg Lab, the Regulation Lab, yeah. where uh, any new technology that does not currently have a regulation can, can be deployed in a controlled environment okay. for six months. We see the outcome, and then we either decree it into law or we decide to um, you know, go back to the drawing board with the players to ensure that we can yeah, actually look at yeah. this more seriously. What makes this important is that we have the agility mm. to be able to change laws and regulations in the UAE quite effectively and, and quite quickly. And we have the dialogues, ongoing dialogues, with all the different players, all the relevant governments, to ensure that we start where everyone has left off, if someone has already started before us, yeah. or that the outcomes that we have can be uh, beneficial to those countries who are exploring it as well. Fantastic. So, you know, uh, given that you, of course, started your your professional career as uh, an entrepreneur, for an entrepreneur who's watching today's interview and saying, uh, uh, should I perhaps be looking at setting up base here in the Dubai UAE region? What would you have to tell them about, you know, whether they're in the tech space or not? I just want to broad base it. What would you like to tell them? I'd like to tell them it's not a question. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think you should. The diversity of talent that we have here, mm -hmm. the 
UAE is positioned as a hub for a broader region. You can explore a market of 3 billion people from one place. The UAE's ability to um, be able to serve different geographies from one place because of our time zone. So you can wake up in the morning, serve Asia. You can serve Europe in the afternoon. You can serve the US in the evening. Are definite advantages for any entrepreneur or any startup. So I urge you to come and explore the UAE. I urge you to seek me out if uh, I'm, I'm around. Uh, I'd like to have a conversation with the entrepreneurs as well. And I think there are so many opportunities that exist. We're okay. just at the beginning. Um, I do have to talk to you about talent and the availability of talent and skilling. Uh, similar to my question on how are you regulating uh, technology that perhaps doesn't even exist today, how are you skilling for technology that perhaps doesn't exist today and is changing? And how are you ensuring that you're finding that talent? So it's three things. First is we have an organic inflow of talent into the UAE, which is only going to increase because the UAE remains open, remains tolerant, remains a vibrant place yeah. for people to explore quality of life. So the second part of it is the fact that the UAE um, we're, we're looking at what is missing in our ecosystem because you know with the, with the talent war that's happening around the world we don't believe that we have the perfect amount of talent we believe that we have a good inflow of talent that we need to continuously work on so one of the things we saw is tech talent was very scarce at one point of time this was the last year so we launched a initiative uh, where we wanted to nearly triple the amount of tech talent that we had in one year so we had 30,000 developers uh, in the UAE According to LinkedIn last year, within a year today, we have over 70,000. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the numbers, the goal has been phenomenal. We're, we're trying to close the year at 100,000, but we're also working with companies to constantly create programs to upskill people, to make it easier to attract people, and to also create an ecosystem where the talent pool is quite unique. We can never compete with India in terms of the sheer number of talent, right? quantity of talent, because of certain constraints that we have in our geography, in our you know, physical environment. Yeah. But I think we can compete with the world when it comes to quality of talent. We can attract the best quality talent here. So you can have 10x the output with one tenth the number of staff. And mm -hmm. I'll give you a good example. Mm -hmm. Telegram, which is a company that has taken the world by storm. It has seen incredible growth. 700 million, 50, 750 million active users. It is competing with a global behemoth like yeah. Facebook. Telegram is based out of Dubai. 99% wow. of their employees are in Dubai. How is it able to compete with Facebook with one tenth of the staff and incredible output? It's because of the quality of talent that they have access to in the UAE. Amazing. And are you starting this training early? Are you ensuring that, say, for, for instance, students uh, have a curriculum that is more digital? Focused? So coding is already embedded within our schools. Mm -hmm. We're now actually working on AI specifically and AI ethics to be taught in school. Blockchain is taught in school. We're constantly working with the schooling system to be agile, to be flexible, and to ensure that the output is, is okay. positive. Let me end then today's conversation by asking you to really talk about uh, any advice that you have for our entrepreneurs uh, who are going to be watching this interview. What do you want to leave us with? I think the opportunities are just starting. We are hearing about, you know, probably ambiguity, tensions, turmoil globally. But I am one to believe that the opportunities are just starting with the advent of technology, with the progress that we're seeing, the more we come together, the more we work together, the more we open up, the more opportunities we're going to see. And I think India and the UAE are incredible examples of two countries and two nations that believe that the future is brighter together, rather than the future being an uh, insulated, you know, singular vision for a specific geography. So I think that a lot more of this is going to happen. We've seen the I2U2 summit and some of the agreements that are happening there. I think for the Indian population or the Marathi population, the future is hopefully going to be very bright. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a great interview. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's all we could pack into this conversation with the Minister for AI. But uh, we're going to continue bringing you more interviews, including with entrepreneurs who are making a difference here in the Dubai UAE market. For tonight is a wrap. Thanks for watching.